Okay, let's give you guys another example of absolute convergence test. So, um, so, so there's a theorem that says that if you're trying to determine whether this thing will converge or if this thing will diverge, what you should do, well, the theorem says you should look at the absolute version of this. So have a look at the absolute version of this. If the whole series here converge, then the theorem says that what you're trying to investigate will also converge. Uh, if if uh, the theorem says that if this thing here diverge, then it doesn't really tell us much about this thing. This thing could converge or it could diverge. If if this thing here diverge, it doesn't tell us anything about this. So let's um let's try and put this theorem to use. So we are trying to determine if this series will converge or if it will diverge. We should look at the the absolute version of this. So have have a look at the absolute version of this. So looking at the absolute version of this. Um, hang on, bear with me. So looking at the absolute version of this, the, the minute you see this, the minute you see this, you should immediately, uh, well we've seen this in the past, whenever you have sign a bubble, uh, and, and you know this bubble is heading towards zero, so for example, 3x squared, uh, as I, uh, sorry, 3m squared, 3m squared. Um, so, so whenever you see something like this, 1 over n, um, so suppose you know this bubble is heading to, towards zero, even though here, even though here we're heading towards infinity. Let's just say that n is heading towards zero. Now, if if n is heading towards zero, um, this bubble you know is heading towards zero. Therefore, you can say, if if you know this bubble is heading towards zero, then you can say the whole thing here uh, will, will will well it will act as three n squared. So here, if you look at this here, you've got one over n. 1 over n. Here n is heading towards infinity. So here n is heading towards in infinity. Or n is heading towards infinity. That means the bubble itself is heading towards zero. Whenever the bubble heads towards zero, then the whole thing here, then you can say the whole thing here will act as 1 over n. We've seen this in the past and you, you have to ingrain this in your mind. Whenever, whenever the bubble is heading towards zero, um, so, so you don't care what's happening over here. Whenever the bubble is heading towards zero, then you can say sine of whatever here will be this thing here. So this thing here then becomes easier to, to work with than this. So the minute you see this, the minute you see this, um, replace this with, uh, with one over n. Because we, we know that, we know that this bubble is going to head towards, towards zero. Because as n tends to infinity, this bubble here will head towards zero. So, um, so, so, so immediately replace this with, with, um, 1 over n. So immediately replace this with, replace this. So immediately replace this with 1 over n. So remember, hang on, let, let, let me go back one step. So we are trying to determine, uh, whether this alternating series will converge or if it will diverge. So we, the theorem says that we should look at the, the absolute version of, uh, of this thing. So looking at the absolute version. Now determine if this will converge or if this will diverge. If this converge, then, then we're done. Then this will automatically converge. So we are trying to determine uh, whether or not this thing here, if this series will converge. But then we, but then here n is heading towards zero, sorry, n is heading towards infinity. Then you know this bubble here is heading towards, towards uh, zero. Well, if, if this bubble is heading towards zero, then you can replace this thing here with 1 over n. So replace this thing with 1 over n. Replace this thing with 1 over n will give you this. Okay, so, so now, um, now if you look at this here, this is going to be, uh, it's going to be minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus, it's, it's gonna, it's going to be 1 plus 1, sorry, it's gonna be negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. So when you take the absolute value of this thing here, it's, it's always going to be, one. So you can consider this thing here as one. So, so because this thing is going to be one, negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, and then you take the absolute value here, you take the absolute value of that, it's, it's going to be one. So, so this whole thing here will then become this. Now, but by the, uh, well, by now you should be able to recognize that the minute you see this, this is to the power of one. So we know immediately, you should be able to tell by now, uh, this p here is one. Uh, so, so it's, it's going to diverge. So going back to here, going back to here, it's, uh, going back to here, we know this thing here is, we can conclude that this thing is going to diverge. Therefore, well, 
therefore we, we can't determine anything. This could still this could still converge, this could still diverge. This thing here doesn't tell us anything to uh, about this. So we, we now have to use um, another method. So I will continue in the next in the um, in the next video. Um, but but the point here is that uh, when 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 you're trying to determine whether this will converge or if, or if this will diverge, you should look at the absolute version of this. Now, if if this thing here happens to to di to uh, to converge, then this will automatically converge, and then we're done, uh, nice and easy. But as it turns out, we we were unlucky that this thing would diverge. So in the next video, because this thing diverged, that uh, we we're going to have to do something else in the, in order to determine whether this thing will converge or this will diverge. Um, the next video will tell us what, what what we need to do because this if if this thing here converges, then we're done. But because it's it, because it diverges, then we're going to have we're going to have to do something else. That something else will be in the next video.